wonderful third week after Pentecost to everyone within the sound of my voice and to those reading my thoughts. This is the retired Bishop of the Episcopal Diocese of the Virgin Islands, the Right Reverend E. Ambrose Garments, bringing you a message of hope in the midst of a very challenging time. If there is one thing that we should not miss at this time, it is that in the midst of the worst of times, there are windows of opportunity opened up to those who are expectant. This is not new to us today. Throughout human history, whenever humanity experienced the worst of times, there among them were opportunities to experience signs that gave hope and the expectation that this too shall pass. You see, those who are expecting a better time don't only expect it, but do what is necessary to hasten that better time. As we face the present pandemic, are there certain requirements that we must follow if we expect a different result? The ancient text tells us that the Lord answered us when we called in our day of trouble the Lord protects us, sends us help, and gives us support. Psalm 20 verses 1 and 2. If we stop complaining for a moment about what we do not have, and acknowledge how in many places some form of assistance was provided for us, we cannot but believe that a higher being was at work on our behalf. Many got more than one check, rent assistance or deferment, payment protection loans, grants, boxes of food. Many governments across the Caribbean and probably the world reached out to the, the inhabitants. While what was received may not have been all that we expect or we wanted, we receive enough to give us hope that the source who provided for us today will continue to provide until the journey is ended and we enter our places of promise. For students of the sacred text, we recall a story of people going through extreme difficulties in one place and being allowed to journey toward a place of promise. Life did not get easier for them in the beginning. They continue to experience scarcity while being provided with just what they needed for the present time. My friends, they were not called to dwell in a land of scarcity, but to travel to a place of promise where all that they needed would be provided. The people not only obeyed in spite of their hardships, they continued to move forward. The lessons learned from their miraculous deliverance with a great amount of wealth gave them courage to keep pressing on toward the goal of the high, higher calling. Yes, during some of their moments of scarcity, they complained and grumbled loudly so the authorities could hear. But many still endured the present time believing that the source who delivered them in the past will also deliver them in the future. Today, we have the same grumbling and complaining in spite of the progress that is being made with the hope for a brighter tomorrow. Caribbean countries are opening up and closing down, and many of us do not see a sign in the recurrence of COVID-19 in areas that once boasted no cases at all. In addition to all that governments are doing to help its citizenry, Many are not following the mandate guidelines in place for our protection. When we take matters into our own hands, we set ourselves up for dire consequences. The old adage holds true. When we see our neighbor's house on fire, wet our own. In a matter of time, if we are not obedient, we will be where they are. Caribbean governments are too dependent on tourism and when it fails, we have no other alternative. We are setting up our countries for extreme hardships, even death through starvation. In the old days, many communities 
whatever their profession, engage in subsistence agriculture and animal husbandry. With the advent of tourism, we abandoned that to our detriment. If the meat processing plants in our supply countries are significantly affected by some pandemic, how will we survive in these islands? The impact of COVID-19 on world economies should teach us that we need to invest in large-scale agriculture, fishery farming, and animal husbandry. Teach us to fish so that we can feed ourselves. We live in one of the richest communities in the Caribbean. If our container vessels with trailers filled with food and other produce cannot come because of supply and demand in the larger countries with larger populations to feed, what will happen to us? Especially those who cannot relocate. Our governments must develop a plan for future sustenance of its inhabitants. The Farmers in Action on St. Croix, through the support of fresh ministries out of Jacksonville, Florida, are to be commended for their vision to begin a process that will supply all local communities with food grown locally. Governments throughout the Caribbean should begin such a process to ensure food security. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. When the wicked rule, the people groan. And where there is no vision, the people perish. Proverbs 28, 29, verse 2 and 18. Again, this is the ancient text speaking to the present time so that history does not have to repeat itself. Who knows when will be the next pandemic? Don't believe that it will take 100 years. With our world fast becoming a global community, epidemics will reach our shores and spread faster than we think. Let us walk by faith and do what is necessary to make our world a better place, to make small communities safe for the inhabitants who want to remain here all our lives and for our descendants to inherit what we would have labored for in our time. This is the Right Reverend E. Ambrose, retired. God bless you all.